What's up y'all, Ryan here again, and recently you've all seen me demo a few of the different new GOC guitars that have come out, but I've gotten a comment like this one before that is basically accusing GOC of completely ripping off the Strandberg Bowden line. Now, although I am a GOC guitars artist, I did pay for all of these guitars myself, including the Strandberg Bowden NX6 Prog that I'm about to show you as well. So I'm not being paid to say any of this, I just wanted to set the record straight because I've used Strandberg guitars for a long time, and obviously now I'm using GOC guitars as well, and I still own both, and so I'm able to use them back and forth and give you guys a real opinion on the differences between the two. And I can tell you, spoiler alert for the whole video, the necks are not the same. So they're definitely completely different necks and I'm gonna show you why. So just to set the tone, I'm going to be comparing the GOC Illumina Plus, which is my six string, and then the GOC Illumina MTLX, which is my seven string, and then the GOC Materia 8, which is my eight string. And then as far as the Strandberg guitar goes, I do have the Strandberg Bowden NX6 Prog. Uh, this is the trem version. I do not currently own any GOCs with a trem or else I'd be comparing the trem to it. Now, let's go ahead and dive into the Strandberg first. So we all know this body shape, right? But the neck from the front looks like any guitar neck, right? When you flip it over, however, and the camera's catching that a little bit there, you can see that there's definitely a different neck profile going on here. And this is what Strandberg is known for, right? They're known for having the Endure neck profile. This neck is known for having some pretty harsh angles and for a couple reasons, according to Strandberg, is that these angles give you more leverage for your thumb and the thicker neck gives you more leverage when you're playing chords. You're supposed to be able to squeeze a thicker neck better than you could a thinner neck. Now, I know that there's a lot of shredders out there that are gonna disagree with that and it really depends on the person. So. Bear with me here. Hopefully the camera is picking this out here, but we do have right here, my index finger is here, but this is normally where your thumb would rest. And it does go down to a different angle the further down the neck that you go. It actually kind of slopes in, and the reason for that is that your hand is usually going to come around this way when you're playing these lower frets, right? And so your thumb needs more room because it's got to kind of come behind the neck there. So it's a little bit more flat here versus up here where it actually rounds out and almost is flat until you get right about here. And that's where it starts to slope out a little bit more right there. Uh, but it's still a very defined angle no matter where you look at this neck at. So you have a very defined angle here and here, and then you have a flat spot basically all down the neck here. And to Strandberg's credit, this is a very comfortable guitar to play for some people. Uh, for myself, I did notice some hand cramping here and there, especially when I first started playing Strandberg guitars. I, I've had a Strandberg Bowden Standard. I've had the Strandberg Bowden Essential. I've also had a Strandberg Bowden OS7, all of which phenomenal guitars. They all sound great. They all play really well. But there are a few things I like about the GOC AO neck more than the Strandberg Endure neck. And let me show you why. So this is my GOC Illumina Plus. And this is my six string version. I'm comparing it first because I was just showing you a Strandberg Bowden NX6 Prog, which is a six string version. Now, when we look at the neck on the GOC, you're going to notice that, there we go, the light's hitting it. We do have a V shape right here on the top, right? But as we go, you don't see the flattened part like you do on a Strandberg. And the reason is that GOC has actually combined the traditional D-shaped neck that everybody is used to, like a flatter D-shaped neck, with the modern V-shape as well. So you do have one angle right here for you to rest your thumb on. So when you're playing chords, especially up in the frets, like I would say one through nine, you really do want to have your thumb resting on this flatter spot right here. That flatter spot allows you to grip and reach your hand around and play the chords that you might be playing in those areas better. But as you get down the neck, you'll notice that the rounded D shape here, and it is a flat D shape, it's not like a baseball bat on here, thankfully, but that rounded D shape does allow you to reach, in my opinion, a little bit better across the fretboard. And that's important for a couple of different reasons as well. What a lot of people don't know is that the GOC guitars, the AO neck is F spaced. And so that means that these strings are spaced for something similar to a Floyd Rose bridge, which means the string spacing is slightly wider than it is on the Strandberg Endure neck. So I actually prefer this because I've played guitars with trems for a really long time and I've gotten really used to the wider spacing, so it's actually something I really preferred when I picked up a GOC for the first time, and I noticed it immediately, especially when swapping back and forth between a Strandberg and a GOC. And that's whether I was on a six or a seven string. I've not yet owned a Strandberg eight string, and I probably won't at this point, to be honest with you. Now, what I've noticed personally as a guitar player is that the GOC necks are more comfortable for me to play, and not just on a six. So if we look at one of my seven or eight string necks from GOC, it becomes even more important to have that rounded, thin D shape on the treble side of the neck. And the reason is, is that, one, I have small hands. And so having a seven string from Strandberg, for instance, the neck was a little bit harder for me to play leads up in the higher frets on it, just because of the fact that it is a little bit thicker of a neck. And that extreme angle that happens down the entirety of the neck definitely hampered my playing a little bit. And again, I'm not a great lead player, but I am learning and I want to optimize myself as much as possible. But if we look at a seven string here, and I'll show you the eight string in a second, but if we look at the seven string, it still has that same thin D-shaped profile across it. And you'll see down here at the bottom frets, that's right where the angle happens. And so you can still rest your thumb right here and have a very comfortable grip while you're reaching these higher frets. And it makes it extremely easy and approachable to play 
on a seven string guitar. And this is a 26 to 27 inch scale length as well. So it is a multi-scale guitar, which also makes it great for staying in tune. When you're in tunings like drop G, drop F sharp, even drop F I've done on this seven string as well. But let's go ahead and check out the eight string now. So even after everything I said on an eight string, this is where the AO neck is even more important because again, I don't have big hands. And even those that do, eight string necks can be a little bit unwieldy to play on. Now, if you look at this from the back, this neck is pretty wide, right? You can see my hand, obviously I'm holding it backwards right now, but my hand, already does reach across the back of it. And the reason why it works well over the front of the fretboard is again, because we have right here, that flattened V edge right there is where your thumb will rest no matter where you're playing at down the neck. And on the new Materia 8, this does have a 45 degree neck heel. And so that actually makes it even more approachable to play when you're down in these lower frets. So you'll see with me, my thumb is still resting right about there. Hopefully that's coming out on camera. And then I'm still able to reach these higher frets very easily, even while being somebody with smaller hands. And so it's very convenient. But even riffing on an eight string from GOC is a lot more comfortable. So if I'm holding the neck up here, again, we have that flatter piece where my thumb is resting. And so I can reach across the entire fretboard easily and not have any pain or any weird like angles that my hand is at. Something that people say about the Strandberg Bowden necks is that they force your hand into the correct position. This isn't necessarily true for everybody, especially people that have grown up and have been playing D-shaped and C-shaped necks all their life. So all of a sudden forcing your hand into a different position might not be the most comfortable for you or the best for your wrist. Some people actually do have pain from playing necks like that. And then they go back to a normal D-shaped neck and they're completely fine. I was one of those people. And now that I'm on my third GOC guitar, and again, I bought my first GOC guitar before I was an artist for GOC guitars. And then I bought the seven and eight string all with my own money as well. I wasn't given these guitars. I'm not paid to make this video, but I bought them both because I found them more approachable to play extended range guitars on a neck that was that comfortable. And that made a huge difference for me, especially being somebody that honestly, I was intimidated by eight string guitars before. So I never purchased a Strandberg eight string. So I never purchased any other brands. I think the first eight string that I held was an agile eight string like 15 plus years ago. And I hated it. The neck was huge. I didn't know what to do with it either. So I hadn't learned any eight string songs or anything like that on it. And I just, I really was intimidated by it. I sold it, I think three or four days after I got it. And so it's been a long time since I've touched an eight string guitar. And now I'm really happy that I got back into it. The AO necks on these GOC guitars have really gotten me back into playing extended range guitars and trying out different tunings, messing with really low down tunings as well. And it's all comfortable and approachable for me. And I think that's something that's really important for the average guitar player. I'm a very average guitar player. I'm not great at any one aspect of it. And honestly, if you look at what GOC guitars are doing right now, they're not just appealing to the average guitar player. These guitars, all three of the GOC guitars that I own right now combined cost me less than that red Strandberg Bowden NX6 Prog. That's like a $2,600 guitar. This eight string was 875, I believe. The gold MTLX was, I think this was 800 on the dot if I'm not mistaken. And then the Illumina Plus was 800 as well. And so these are all very affordable, very approachable guitars that all sound great out of the box. And that's something that you don't really get out of other guitars. I love this Strandberg, don't get me wrong. It's got great pickups in it. It looks phenomenal and it does play really well, but it's not as comfortable for me to play as my GOC Illumina Plus six string that I have right behind me. And not only that, but at the price range, my GOC came out of the box ready to go. If you were to grab a Strandberg in the same price range as any of these guitars, which one is almost impossible. I don't know if Strandberg has even a single one that is in that price range. I think 999 would be the cheapest, which would be the Strandberg Bowden Essential, which is actually not a bad guitar at all, but bang for your buck, the GOC guitars are going to outpace it in my opinion easily. I did own a Strandberg Essential for about a month and I sold it. And honestly, at this point, this Strandberg Prog that I've got sitting here is going to be listed for sale very soon because now that I've got a six string, a seven string and an eight string from GOC, I don't really find myself needing and or playing that one anymore, to be honest with you. So it's just going to sit there and I'm gonna list it for sale at this point because I actually really do enjoy these guitars. But all of this is to say, GOC Guitars is not ripping off Strandberg. And anybody who owns both or have played both will be able to attest to that pretty quickly because as soon as you pick up a GOC guitar, you'll notice the neck is completely different. String spacing is different. And then if you go and pick up your Strandberg guitar again after that, you'll again notice a complete difference and you'll have to actually alter your playing style no matter which one you pick up. They're both ergonomic, they're both light, they're both comfortable to play for some people, it just depends on the person. But I do believe that the AO neck on the GOC guitars will appeal to a much larger amount of people because of the thin D shape on the treble side of the neck versus having the modern V shape going down the length of the neck. So again, all these are my thoughts and opinions and you may disagree with it, but go ahead and leave that in the comments, honestly, because I want to hear what you all think. Anybody that's owned a GOC and owned a Strandberg, 
Let me know what your thoughts are between the two of them because I'm interested to hear what other people say. I have a lot of friends that own both as well at this point and they've told me their opinions and honestly they align perfectly with what I'm saying here today. But if your opinion differs or even if you agree with what I've said, let me know in the comments because I wanna see what everybody else is saying right now. I hope this all helps you make a decision between the two guitars and I'll talk to y'all soon.